Hello everyone and welcome back to The Doctor's Garage. Now as the title of this video suggests, I'm going to be talking about whether the Land Rover warranty is really just a massive waste of time. So I'm currently sat in my 2018 Land Rover Discovery HSC Luxury and for those that watched the last video or any video on my channel will know I've owned this for a number of years since it was nearly new and I've had my fair share of problems when it comes with the typical things that Land Rovers have wrong with them. In the last video I did here on YouTube I talked about why after having no trouble for a year, suddenly two big problems had occurred. The windscreen started leaking and I had a suspension ball joint that literally disintegrated just under 50,000 miles. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about the outcome of that. I've seen Land Rover since then. I'm back in my car and you'll be quite surprised to hear what happened with those issues. Also, if you have a Discovery 5 or any other Land Rover model, you're going to want to stick around for this whole video because the service department, after all these issues and we we'll talk about were sorted, said to me, these are a couple of things you need to be doing on a weekly basis with your car to not let it have any more trouble. So with my Land Rover Discovery 5, I've had a few significant issues. I've had a new engine replacement. I've had an oil leak. I've had a leak in the air suspension. And then everything was good. It had fallen out of warranty. I'm now paying the extended £900 a year for the Land Rover warranty. And I was thinking everything was looking really good. About two weeks ago, when there was that massive storm here in the UK, I had some leaking coming through the driver's side of the windshield. So much so, it was dripping and soaking the, um, the pillar airbag. The other thing, at a very similar time, about two or three weeks ago, the front left suspension ball arm joint, I think it's called, had worn, and that had nearly failed the MOT, but it passed, but it said, look, it needs attention, you need to get that sorted. So they're the two issues that I had going on my Land Rover Discovery that I've been investigating and trying to get to the bottom of with Land Rover. So you may recall from the last video, I was going to get it booked in with Land Rover. They couldn't see me for two weeks, and there was this storm, it was raining a lot, so I ended up gorilla taping all the seams of my car down the side of the windscreen, the top of the windscreen. I actually did the whole sunroof as well, as I know the leaking issue with Discoveries is more common on the cars with the pan roof. That actually did stop the leak and it sorted the problem temporarily. In the meanwhile, I also learned that the front suspension issue with the approved warranty, and this is good if anyone's got that that's watching this, if you have the approved warranty and something like that fails its MOT, Land Rover will contribute £750 to getting that repair. And that would have covered the cost of that repair if it had failed its MOT, but it didn't. So that's something to bear in mind if you've got the approved warranty. And next time for myself, when it does get MOT'd, to be a bit more hoping that it doesn't pass maybe if it's got issues like that because it will get repaired for free. Now, since the last video, the dripping got so bad up in this top right that we had to call Land Rover and just say, look, can you take it in now? We just need to get it out and get someone to look at it as soon as they can. And actually, within a day, two days, it was in the Land Rover workshop. I said, look, we're not going to be able to look at it immediately, but keep it with us. The next two days, we'll get an answer. And they did. They did a great job. We got the car in. They took a look at it and completely agreed there was a problem with the bonding or the seal between the glass and the body of the car. And Land Rover themselves, the dealership I was with, didn't exactly say this is a recall problem or there's loads of issues, but they were brilliant at getting it sorted with Land Rover themselves. So they submitted a case to Land Rover saying... This isn't obviously an approved warranty issue, but it is an issue we see a lot with these cars. Is there anything you can do about it? They had to send like the kite mark of the windscreen, like all videos and pictures of the whole thing. And they were absolutely brilliant to be fair. Land Rover did a great, great job, my local dealer. It took about four or five days for that to be escalated through Land Rover. We're kind of waiting thinking, is it gonna be covered? There was some conversation because I spoke to Land Rover, the sort of main headquarters in the meanwhile, saying, look, I've got this problem with my car. Is there anything you can help with? Because I'd really appreciate it considering this car's less than 50,000 miles and it's a known problem. It's definitely not a wear and tear issue. And they said, yes, we may be able to contribute a gesture of goodwill, but we've got to see what our, our technicians say at the dealership and kind of go from there, which is understandable. That's fair. While this was all going on, the suspension arm at the front left was approved. So Land Rover under the approved warranty got that sorted for me completely free of charge, which is brilliant because it pretty much covered that £900 for the extended warranty that I've been paying. So I was really, really happy with that and actually quite surprised because when you read the fine print for the approved warranty, you'll see that it says it doesn't cover any suspension parts. Obviously, that could easily be argued, is it wear and tear or not? But Land Rover were actually great about it and did sort it out for me completely free of charge. If you're new to my channel here on YouTube, 
go subscribe, like this video, let me know what you think in the comments below. I've got loads of content on my Discovery 5, but also on my 2007 Land Rover Defender TD5 as well. So go check out my other videos while you're here. I got the call about two days ago from Land Rover saying, great news, the windscreen has now been approved as well. So this windscreen is probably about £2,000 to put in if we were to pay for it, got done completely free of charge. And Interesting when they're investigating the car, and this is for anyone that does have a leak, if you've got a Discovery or any Land Rover car, they found water going right down into the footwell and under the car mats, which is almost as bad as my old 2007 Defender that I have, to be honest. But there was water all under the floor mats, all in this pillar, and they actually did a full electrical test for me, made sure there was nothing else that failed. On the video I put up last time, a lot of you guys commented saying you had loads of tech issues after that issue because the water had kind of got in. So I would highly recommend if you do have a leak, get on it really early, tape up your seams, I don't know if I'd use Gorilla Glue again. I've taken some of it off around the windscreen when they fitted it, but obviously it's still on the sunroof and the residue getting Gorilla Tape off, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that, to be honest, yet. I'm going to see maybe a heat gun, maybe a hairdryer, try and heat up the glue, but at the moment it's not looking too good for getting that off. So that's not going to be a very fun job. So initially very sceptical with this journey because I've read so many horror stories of Land Rover, how bad the customer care has been and not getting stuff sorted and trying to bury things. For me at least, my experience has been really, really positive. Both my warranty when I had like my engine replaced was done completely fine, no issues. And now with the approved warranty, it's already paid for itself with this repair that's just been done. So that didn't seem that difficult to do. The dealers were really supportive and got behind my case that made it much easier. I think it's important probably when dealing with any dealership is to remember that when you're dealing with your local dealer, they are almost a franchise or whatever of the actual manufacturer. So you can speak to them and you need to kind of back them really to take the case to Land Rover themselves. And I found having someone in the service department that I kind of got on with, that we, you know, we didn't argue about anything. It was kind of looking positive at stuff, really helped get the issue resolved. So I couldn't be happier really because I've had the windscreen done and that front suspension arm done, completely free of charge, covered by Land Rover, done under warranty uh, as such, even if not the approved warranty. This car is four years old and a few months, and uh, it's done, like I say, about 49, 48,000 miles around that mark. So the fact they still did that for me was great. I know it probably shouldn't happen in a car like this, but for anyone that buys a Land Rover, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. So it's great to see that they actually do follow things up and get it sorted when it needs to be done. So that kind of closes the case really for this issue that I've had in my discovery. And I'm hoping now to keep this car for a longer period of time, looking at probably keeping it up to the five year mark even, just because actually the price of these cars at the moment is pretty static, if not appreciating slightly. So I'm really happy to hold on to it for a bit longer. I feel that literally everything has been done. I would say, however, when I spoke to the service department, I did say, look, I've had all these issues what is going to be next and the thing they said to me was you need to make sure this car never has more ad blue in it than it asked for even half a liter over the 12 liter that it asked for probably every once a year never ever overfill it because they have so many cars they have to get into the workshop and drain it completely messes them up which i never knew which is great the other thing is he said you need to drive this car for at least 20 minutes over 50 miles per hour once a week and that is for the dpf filter so some useful tips there if you've got one of these cars make sure you do those things for the maintenance of it going longer term obviously service it regularly and i think all in all some good tips there to help keep your land rover going a little bit longer i hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been a good insight into my journey with my discovery if you've got the same vehicle or something alike let me know in the comments below the issues that you've had and how you felt they've been dealt with but for me overall i can say that actually land rover have been great to me and uh, i've had everything done that i need to be done on my car thousands of pounds of repairs done free of charge so quite happy with that really thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video